Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at regression analysis using Excel. This topic could be covered in an intro to data analytics course or a data analytics in accounting. Also, accounting students can use this as well as managerial accounting. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, tax, and Excel lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them, subscribe to the channel. If they help you, it, might, it means they might help others. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education, your CPA exam, your CMA exam, your enrolled agent exam. So if you're interested in, in improving your exam score on the CPA exam and pass the exam, please check out my website. So to illustrate the concept of a regression analysis, I'm going to be using the example of advertising expense and revenue. So basically, what is a regression and why do we use, why do we need to do a regression? The idea of a regression to see if there's any relationship between a dependent and an independent variable. What does that mean? Well, we know that if we advertise, if we spend money on advertising, it should have some effect on revenue. Well, let's find out if what we advertise will have effect on revenue. And this is very common. Think about a business, an e-business or a regular business. What they do is they play is they place Google ads. And they want to know, for example, how much Google ads is increasing the revenue because you are spending money to generate money. So you want to know how much of that money Ex help explain your increase in revenue because that's very important if it's helping you should increase it if it's not helping anymore you should reduce it you should you should change your strategy and that's not the only way you could use a regression anytime you want to examine the correlation between two variables if one drives the other then you would use this regression so it's very useful in the real world so to run your regression you would highlight the advertising and the revenue columns and in this example, I'm going to be using in single regression. You could use multiple regression. Maybe I will do that in another recording. You click on data analysis. Now, if, again, if you don't have this analysis tool pack, please look in the description for this. You want to click on regression. You, you choose regression. If you don't know what it is, just R, R, and it's going to take you to regression. Click on OK. And now you have to tell Excel which one is the Y, the input of the Y and input of the X. Well, you have to understand, let me just take this out so, you, you see what, so we see what we are doing here. The X is the independent variable and the Y is the dependent variable. So the Y is the revenue. The revenue is dependent upon, upon advertising expense. And the reason I chose this example because it's easy to associate those two. Your revenue is dependent upon advertising. The more you advertise, generally speaking, the more exposure you have, generally speaking, the more revenue you should have. So your revenue is dependent on advertising. So for example, I don't advertise a lot for my business, which I should, but I don't, not yet at least. So let's go ahead and input Y. I'm going to input the revenue Y and the Y, select the Y. And the X axis is the advertising. Again, I'm using a single regression. You could use multiple regression and I will, I will have another recording down the road. I'm gonna click on the label to indicate I have a label on the top. A confidence interval, it's gonna be 95%. I'll explain why 95%, what I chose, why I chose this 95%. Now, where do you want your output? You could uh, have a, 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 new, uh, a new worksheet, a new workbook, or you could have an output range here. I'm gonna choose a new worksheet. This way you will have a clean slate. I'm gonna click on the residual plot uh, line fit plots and you'll see what that is. I'm not going to click on residual. Maybe I'll click on residual too. It doesn't matter. And uh, we, I, I'll click on residual. You'll see what does that mean. And residual plot. We'll talk about that. Then I'm going to click on OK and it's going to run my analysis, my regression analysis in a new worksheet. And I will fix the, I'll fix those later. So I'm going to now focus on what I think is important when you are reading this regression. So what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And how should you read this regression? Okay. So the first thing I would look, I would look for is this R square, this R square right here. Okay. What does this R square represent? Well, remember, I'm looking at the relationship between advertisement and sales. And this R square, it's going to tell me the relationship or the proportion of variability between in, in, in sales, the variability in sales, 
explained by the advertisement. How much, how much variability in sales explained by advertisement? And what it's saying is here, what it's saying here, I'm going to make this, let's assume 30%. It's 0.2872. And I'm just going to make 30%. It's easier to talk about this. So 30, my change in sale is explained 30% by the change in advertisement. Now, this could be because of just a coincidence. That's what that's what it is. So to find out how how strong is this, this relationship? Well, you have to look at something called the significance of F, F test. And notice here it's point zero 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 seven five five one oh five. That's a small. Well, what I'm looking for is something that's less than 5%. Remember I said I want my confidence interval uh, 95%. It means I could be wrong 5% of the time. But what it's saying here um, you know, there is no chance that this relationship is by chance, or there's a low chance this relationship by chance. So the lower this, the lower this number, the lower this, the lower this significance f, the smaller this number, the greater the probability that this thirty percent relationship is not by chance. Now, is this thirty percent large uh, relationship? Eh, well, if it's fifty, it's better. But 30% is significant. I mean, it's it's 30% of your sales is driven by advertisement. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good relationship. That's what I'm trying to say here. But the higher, the better. So it's not only this number you want to see. Is it by chance or you have a good significant number? You would look at the F, uh, significance of F. And this basically, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to talk about this F, but this F is is represented by this number. You know, it's transferred into this number. You, you don't have to worry about the statistics. This is not a statistical course. But the point is, those two are related to each other. And actually, those are all related, but you would only look at the significance of F. Now, the other thing you want to look at is the intercept. The intercept, basically the y-intercept. And the, which is called the coefficient or the y-intercept. And the advertising coefficient as well. Well, what do we what do we need to understand? We need to understand that the intercept is eighty one thousand nine hundred twenty four dollars and seventy five cent. Let me show you on the graph how do we how do we interpret the intercept? So I'm gonna come up here, and this is I'm gonna increase the size of this. Give me one moment, please, so it looks a little better. So I'll be able to explain the or help you understand. What does it mean, the y-intercept? Let me, let me grab it and put it down here for now, okay? So, this is the y-intercept. It means, I'm just going to extend this line, the predicted value. It means if we have no advertisement, this is y, and this is the x-axis, okay? So, so, this is the advertisement, and this is the revenue. So if we have zero advertisement, if we did not advertise, not a penny in advertisement, our sales should be the y-intercept 81,924. So this is what we're saying, okay? So this is what the, inter the coefficient intercept is, 81,924 if we have zero advertisement. Now, as we advertise more, our revenue goes up. But, but, but how much does it go up by? Well, it goes up by this amount. 3.67 or 3.68. So for every dollar we put an advertisement, we're going to multiply it by 3.67 increase in sales. So simply put, if you really I want to know what's my the formula for my total sales, my predicted formula or my predicted sales, I can take it's $81,925. I'm going to round it plus $3.68 rounding times X, which is my advertisement. And this is going to give me my predicted sales based on predicted sales based on this regression, based on this regression. Now, how good is this regression? Well, what I did is, and I told you, it's, it explained it 28% of the time, but what I did is I had a residual plot you remember I told you I'm going to be showing you the res residual plot, and this is the residual plot, and basically this explain this tells you what I'm going to be looking at now. Notice sometime, sometime the revenue is below, sometime the revenue is above this re regression line, 
But if we net all these out, they will net out to zero. So sometimes it's a little bit above, sometimes it's a little bit below. This, this is a residual plot. Let me show you the numbers. So if I take my first observation and I plug in this formula, if I take my first observation and plug in this formula, my predicted revenue will be 101,007, which is going to be less than the a thousand and two dollars less than the that less than the actual revenue. Well, the same thing, if I take my second observation and I input the formula, it's also less. So at some point, it's going to be less. And if I scroll down, in some situation, I'm going to have more revenue. But overall, they will net out to zero. They will net out to zero. So what I did is I was able to explain or I was able to predict, use this information to be able to predict what change would I expect if I increase my budget? So simply put, now I can come here and say, well, what happened if I make my budget $10,000? What would happen to my total sales? Or what happened if I made my budget, my advertising budget $7,000? And see if that materializes. If it materializes, if it materializes, it means the relationship is good. Maybe I would, I should be able to able to advertise more and if it's if there's that positive relationship then that's a good idea if it's not having any effect then I should stop advertising so hopefully I gave you an idea of how to run the regression in Excel how to read the major component and how to meet the, the, the major numbers in Excel again here you have the p-value as well again this is going to tell you the significance of the coefficient and you want it to be especially for the x variable and this is significant, so it's it's a good it's a it's a good relationship. It's not by chance. Hopefully, in the next session, I will take a look at a multiple regression. But again, I would like to remind you: if you have any questions, or if you'd like to visit my website for additional resources, if you're an accounting student or a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website for additional resources. Please like this recording, share it, put it in playlist, study hard, good luck, and stay safe, especially those coronavirus.